Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Matt and in this video I'm gonna talk about how society and mainstream media tries to discourage young men from getting a hair transplant, from improving their appearance and from actually having a better quality life. I'm gonna talk about the young guy who decided to get a hair transplant in Turkey and there was a reporter from BBC who actually visited him before hair transplant. She accompanied him during his hair transplant and visited him also after hair transplants. How they are trying to manipulate this story in order for the young guys out there to see it as more a discouragement and not really as an encouragement. Alright, so that's Paul, he's 26 and he's clearly receding. You can see the edges, they are almost completely bald and we can see the frontal area, the frontal hairline here, which is slightly receded but still somehow there, it starts to recede it from the front but there is also a bald spot which is really hidden behind the frontal hairline. So I have been case reports around the world of people actually dying from hair transplant world of people actually dying from hair transplants. People actually dying from hair transplants. Why it doesn't surprise me that we can see already after 35 seconds such a big of a discouragement. You know, a very well positioned surgeon or hair loss specialist saying you that there have been people dying after hair transplants. Really, there was one person that was documented who died after hair transplant. Unfortunately, but if you take a look at the first hair transplant being performed in 1952, it's like 70 years ago, all right? And since then only one person died, with hair transplants now being performed all over the world, like 400 thousands of procedure every single year, only one person died. So it really is not that big of a deal, right? Why would they put it right at the start of this video? Just, just one, that makes me wonder. Let's watch it further. All right, so now she's visiting him and she wants to find out why this guy wants to do it. Me on a night out with his mates in Middlesbrough. While we're getting ready, he tells me what he sees when he looks at his hair in the mirror. This is uh, me at my worst, quite naughty. Even my girlfriend hasn't seen me like this. I hear hiding it, I hear flicking it across all the time. It embarrasses me going to the hairdressers and push it forward and it's just, you just see people looking at me. So you're going to pay nearly £2,000 to... Money can't buy happiness, can it? It's worth it for me, £2,000 to have a full set of hair. Or even just the possibilities, good enough for me, I guess. Why do you feel you have to do something about it, though? It's just confidence. And I like this girl, like, she's just asking this guy, like, but why would you do that? Why would you pay so much money for just, just, just looking better? Like, how she couldn't understand a woman who spends money on makeup, on hair extensions, on any other creams, lotions, and all the stuff that she puts on her face, permanent eyebrows, permanent, I don't even want to know. Okay, so she's now pointing out the student that died after a hair transplant. This is the one case in the world. Millions and millions of hair transplants performed already in the world, in the history of hair restoration surgeries, and there was like one death. And they're already pointing it out second time. All right, guys, now they want to show us a guy who got like two hair transplants and now he's very unsatisfied with the result because apparently he had a bad luck and both hair transplants went wrong and now he's left with a hair that he hates. So let's take a look at it and let's find out if it's real or if there is some hidden facts to it, some hidden truth behind it. Let's take a look. And other men have done permanent damage to their hair. This is the bit that I really struggle to speak about. Um, this is because I know how much it's affected me. Jerry had two transplants, but some new hair didn't grow back. Now he can't have any more surgery. He wanted to warn Paul that he's now stuck with hair that he hates. I'm in the situation where I can't be repaired uh, and I'll never ever get what I set out for in, in the beginning. What do you think? Sure, that's, the density is very poor and the density here is actually okay, you know, because if we take a look on what was transplanted, we will realize that the regrow is actually appropriate to the density in which the hair was planted, which is 
here okay if we take a look at the implanted area here the density is actually not that good guys it's not that good at all the density here is actually very poor in this area this is a huge area it's just whole mid scalp is bald and they planted i could literally count all the grafts here if i would zoom in right now there are probably like 100 grafts or something like the more most dense areas uh, in which the hair was planted in uh, better density are these and uh, the the areas with less density are actually in the middle here and here this is actually very low density you know and the better density can be seen here and can be seen here so if we take a look at the before after difference this guy actually got what he got implanted you know he cannot expect better growth after such graft placement so again take a look at the picture here and here uh, in my opinion look at here the density of the grafts here is very nice as it was implanted and the front here is not so good is not so dense as well as the mid scalp and this is only the one hair transplant so show me the second hair transplant you know if he, he got two hair transplants there is no way that you would look like this after two hair transplants even if you would have been bald to begin with completely bald okay so you really chose like two bad surgeons for two hair transplants you made like two bad mistakes at the same time so you didn't learn anything you didn't evaluate which surgeon you should trust and which surgeon you shouldn't trust this is something that uh, if you watch my channel something like that would never happen to you all right now they get to istanbul turkey and the hair transplant is going to be performed i'm not going to show you that if you want to see it you can watch the whole video from bbc all right now let's watch about and hear what psychologists have to say on to men want to look better getting uh, various beauty procedures in order to improve their looks and about men being more conscious about their looks celebrities are having it done you see a lot of this on social media and men are more and more image conscious than ever before some psychologists have been watching this trend closely and they're concerned it's really important to have a psychological evaluation before rushing into any cosmetic surgery procedure. Some people have underlying low self-esteem and the surgery is not actually going to fix anything. They're not going to be happier afterwards and they may focus on other areas that they want to improve and it becomes addictive or obsessive. What I agree upon with her is that if you have any kind of low self-esteem issues and you get anything done on your face, nose, ears, uh, lips, whatever, plastic surgery, it may not really fix your low self-esteem if you suffer from like chronic low self-esteem or something. But she says this in a way that if you are a man and you want to get your hair transplant, you should like search a psychologist so he can evaluate your situation. Why are you so insecure about that? Why does it make you feel like this and that? Like over analyzing it so much. Because in my opinion, hair transplant is not like any other plastic surgery, like a nose job or, or boob job or liposuction. Because what you basically doing with hair transplant surgery you're getting your hair back the hair that originally by nature used to be there okay you did have the hair and you basically just restoring the hair to the point where it used to be so you are not adding anything artificial uh, onto your body you know you are not making any body part smaller bigger smoother and another thing what this woman psychologist doesn't talk about or doesn't see probably is that actually most of the insecurities most of the low self-esteem levels in guys are actually coming from the hair loss itself she wants to make us think like 
there is something internal, you know, that we are just like insecure because it's in our head and we should embrace it because it's a psychological problem. But how about if I tell you that most of guys, most of the guys that I know pers in person or that are writing me on a daily basis, how they're losing hair, they were cool guys before they started to experience hair loss in their young age. They were cool. They were secure with themselves. They were the most confident, baddest guys in their social circle. And then the hair loss actually started to make them feel more insecure. So tell me one reason why we shouldn't now target this hair loss problem as a root cause of this insecurity, of this low self-esteem. So this is actually makes the most sense to me to actually try to get the hair back of those people and they will again feel secure, confident as they used to be. Uh, don't try to tell me this bullshit with oh, psychological and we need to evaluate. You know, he had this hair, he lost it, he felt certain way before, which was confident and secure, and now he's not. So what's the reason for that? Hmm, I think it's the lost hair that made him feel the way. So let's try to get back the hair to his scalp and he can feel the way he used to feel, okay? By the way, my name is Matt and you are watching the Hair Transplant channel where it's all about stopping our hair loss, getting our hair back and hair transplant. There is a lot of playlist on my channel where you can find out how to better prevent your hair loss, how to stop your hair loss, how to make your hair fuller or how to get a good hair transplant, quality hair transplant. And there is also my email list for all the guys who are really interested in finding the best hair transplant clinic for you. So make sure you sign up right now. All right, at the end of this video, the reported visited Paul after the hair transplant. It was like about one month since the hair transplant. Look at your hair. The first month after surgery is the worst period for hair transplant patients. After around 10 days, the hair from the transplanted follicles falls out and it can take up to six months for new hair to properly grow back. And you can ask here again, why did they have to choose and visit him after first month and not after sixth month at least they could have shown the end result you know for the watchers if, if it was successful or not if they wanted to make this a proper video they should have at least waited for six seven months and then visit him to show people how the hair transplant actually went so paul could have shared like more honest opinion on how he finds his result i think they don't want to show people how happy this guy may be after 12 months, how dense his frontal hairline may look and how he's like now happy with his mates, how his girlfriend really loves it and how he just looks younger and everything, but not they decided to do it like this. All right, thank you for watching guys. That was a long video, but I had to react to this video in order to provide you with a more insightful, more true view on a hair transplant. It's not like this dangerous that people are dying after hair transplants, that every hair transplant ends up in a fail, like this Jeffrey guy had to experience, you know, and uh, it's it, and the end result after hair transplant will take at least six to twelve months to appear. So for all the new guys who never seen how it goes with hair transplants, these are the people that I wanted to kind of talk to through this video, but also to my subscribers who are very, very supportive and who are watching all of my videos. I hope that was a interesting video for you to now like open a nice discussion on and let me know in the comments below how you liked it and let me know what you think about the video or watch the original video that I will put the link uh, also into my video description so you can watch it and let me know in the comments below what you think about that and what's your opinion on the mainstream media and how they are trying to influence young guys and how they try to bad talk hair transplant. So that was Matt Dominance from the Hair Transplant channel guys and we will see each other in the next video.